that you saw that with Potra a few times this year. He got up, but he'd get squished. He was like a bug sometimes. And I think it's a cautionary tale for younger players in that, you know, you don't always want to rush guys. I'm, again, I'm not saying Potra's rushed. I'm saying that he wasn't rushed. And look at how hard he was hit and, and how many, you know, licks he took. So, to me, it was a cautionary tale, and he was ahead of schedule. And, I and you know, we discussed this a little bit, I think, last week uh, when it came to him, like, oh, does this hurt his development? No, I don't think it does. And welcome into Poke the Bear, episode 203. That's Connor Ryan. I'm Evan Marinovsky. Connor, what is up? Evan, I'm doing all right. You know, um, a little disappointed, to be honest with you, that the bean pot wasn't held as originally planned. I don't know whether it was the the impending blizzard that dropped the next day. Maybe the ice was a little wonky. I don't know. The, the electricity maybe was off. Um, I don't know what exactly the cause was, but considering how. Uh, Boston University, the team that's won one of the most times. Um, the fact that they weren't able to hold it in its entirety and award a champion this year uh, was very disappointing. But I understand it's not my call. I understand it's probably got forces outside of anyone's control that decide whether or not these games can go on. So uh, just just a bummer, man. Just a bummer that the beanball wasn't given out this year. Who knows what could have happened? Yeah, I'm not letting you off that easy. Not letting you I do have some news. They did play the game. They did uh, play I the bl- game. I don't believe so. You know, you're, you must have been playing. You must have been delirious having some yeah. NyQuil, playing some NHL or something I, like well, that. I, I, I was. I was very – I didn't go to the bean pot. I was very sick. So you're right. Maybe I did imagine it. I didn't either because I didn't have it. That's right. That's right. That's right. Um, but uh, Northeastern, un- for you, unfortunately, won in a shootout. Uh, I, I know that is news. I, maybe you know I'm thinking of a different bean pot. Maybe it was played. They played it at Hockey Town. I think you went to the you went to the Garden. Oh. They didn't have it there. They moved it to Hockey Town, okay. closer to Jerry okay. Keefe. They wanted to play in Jerry Keefe's backyard uh, at Hockey Town. So um, good for them. Um, you know what's interesting is that Bruins game on Tuesday night against the Lightning. Um, kind of reminded me a little of that bean pot game, and that the team that outplayed the other didn't, didn't uh, happen. D- okay. Didn't win. Yeah, it didn't happen. It just didn't just didn't occur. Um, but the Bruins uh, lost three two to Tampa Bay in a shootout on Tuesday night. And what's interesting, Connor, is it was my birthday on Tuesday. And Evan, happy birthday, belated birthday. Thank you, thank you. I turned uh, I turned fifty eight years old. It's an mm-hmm. honor. It's uh, 58 years young. Don't forget. Yes. 58 years young. You think if I didn't say I was kidding, there'd be people who'd be like, wait a minute. He's 58. Like yeah. th- I, I, that would be pretty funny. I think I, I'm going to leave it at 58. We're talking about the internet here. Evan. yes, people would absolutely believe if you told them that you're 58, the people who are like, well, that's fact. <laughs> He's 58 years old. So I'll leave it at that. Um, but, uh, you know, I was going to go to dinner with my, my girlfriend and I look at StubHub. Or I look at Ticketmaster, excuse me, not StubHub, Ticketmaster, uh, Tuesday morning. And I'm like, huh, ticket price is real low. And they were like, it was like 48 bucks for the fifth row of the balcony. And I'm like, why? Like, it's the lightning. It's Marchand's thousandth game. I get that the weather was supposed to be a factor, but it wasn't. And so I'm like, geez, I'm like, we go to dinner all the time. Let's like, let's do this. You know, let's go to the Bruins. And so literally as I was putting the tickets in my uh, cart, it goes, oh, the buyer has changed it from $48 to 40 And I was like, ah, even better. I'll take it. Um, so we, uh, we, we went, and it was fun. But it did remind me a little bit of that, that Beanpot game. And that it, I, you know, I thought the Bruins played well. There, was, there just wasn't a lot of pushback. I mean, I think the fact that they didn't score on those two power plays at the end of the game in that third period sort of did them in. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think when you weigh that against the uh, the game against the Capitals on Saturday, anything's a step in the right direction there. Hell, right? Like you could be, you could still be you lose two nothing, and it'd be an improvement over that game on on Saturday. Um, as I said, I think it was they made a step in the right direction. I think they controlled play a lot more. 
Um, you know, they erased a two nothing deficit in that game where it felt like early on there was going to be another one of those here we go again kind of games for a team that's kind of fallen into a little bit of a rut here. Um, but bounce back, um, you know, Tampa's really good team. They're playing at a high level now. What do you know? They're healthy and they've got a lot of high end talent and that can carry you into 100 points in a season. And it seemed like they're well on their way to doing that once again. So, um, as you said, like, I think if you're the Bruins, you focus a little bit more on the positives of getting back to your game, you know, rebuilding your, uh, your approach on the ice. You weren't, you know, completely, uh, you know, manhandled or you weren't in a spot where you really had nothing going on. You're able to generate some good looks, had a lot of quality chances that again, when you've got Andre Vasilevsky making those saves, um, not going to win a whole lot of games when a guy like that is really dialed in and on his game. So, um, I think if you're the Bruins, you view it as a positive in terms of it, it just felt more like, a, you know, uh, you'll take the point out of a hard fought kind of game like that. That being said, the flip side of the coin, right? Six power play opportunity. I'll, I'll, I'll give them five because what they had one power play with like 1.2 seconds left in overtime. Yeah, so that, which they got five, a shot five, off. They did get a chance off. I'll give them that. Yeah. So five power play uh, opportunities over five. As you said, they had what two in the last 10 minutes of the third period. I think we had three total. I want to say in the third period. Um, again, even with Vasilevsky, uh, in that you've got enough talent on that unit to get that, get that one goal to put you over the top to kind of land that knockout punch. Wasn't able to deliver it there. So yes, there's definitely, I don't think the Bruins fans should be, uh, all sunshine and rainbows off of a, a one point shootout loss to the lightning um, when this team desperately needs to kind of right the ship. But I think it was a step in the right direction, at least, right? They kind of got back to what they need to do to consistently win games. If you fix that power play, you cash out on one of those, it's a different game. So um, I think more pauses to draw out of this one, as opposed to maybe focusing on just like this Bruin seems in a rut and I don't know how they get out of it. The play like, the play like they did on Tuesday they're going to, uh, I think, start stringing together some more regulation wins pretty soon. I would say if Vasilevsky's not net for that game, you probably win. Um, yeah. you, know, you think about that Marshan, great uh, blocker save in overtime by Vasilevsky yeah. on, on Marshan. And, um, you know, it just he's so good. You said it. When he's dialed in, like, that is probably the best goalie in the world when he's just completely on his game. Um, when that puck slipped past Olmark, uh, that first one, because I was sitting basically like, Right along the the goal line, I'm like, ah, oh, man, maybe there's a reason these tickets were forty bucks. Um, but you know, I, like again, the Bruins aren't a team that outshoots a lot of teams. You know, they they you know kind of uh, find ways to win in other ways. They uh, hold on to the puck a little more, settle for or, you know try to get better chances. And um, you know, on Tuesday you see that goal for McAvoy kind of just slip in from the point and like a little more you know uh, in, uh, urgency shooting the puck. Um, but, you know, again, you said it. I think if that, you know, uh, most nights you play like that, you're going to win. Um, also, I want to apologize to people real quick. Uh, my internet sucked lately. I don't know why it has been choppy. Right now I see that I have like three out of four network connection things. Uh, they have little bars that we can see and mine's like yellow. So I want to apologize to people who are watching on YouTube if I am choppy because I know that that is the most annoying thing. So my apologies. Um, Evan, Evan out here looking like solid snake PlayStation 1. <laughs> that is so specific. That is so specific. Um, real ones know. Real ones do know. Um, but, you know, it's interesting. Uh, Tampa has had the Bruins number for a long time, at least in the playoffs. And I wanted to ask you, I know last night, again, uh, Bruins outplay the Lightning. Lightning kind of uh, take the game in a shootout. Um, if these two teams were to play... To, you know, a seven game series today or starting in April or May. Would you take the Bruins? I mean, I think it all comes down to what Vasilevsky you're getting, because I think that's the big equalizer, right? Because I think you look at this. Uh, um, I almost said Chiefs team, but, you know, they kind of remind you a little bit, though, of like this Chiefs te- of like the Chiefs team where it's like they are not. This is not the, the best lightning team we've seen off of this really strong run they've had right like they're pretty top heavy um they invest a lot of money in their top six guys their top stars and it's kind of sapped some of that depth away you don't have guys like blake coleman and barkley goudreau on the third line stuff like that um but 
you have still enough high end talent there. He's still have an elite goalie that when he's on his game, he's probably the best in the entire NHL. That um, I think the Bruins maybe have a, a a good chance if they play their game to beat the Lightning. But that is a matchup that I do not want any. You know, if you're a team, I don't think you want to face the Lightning in the first round, even if they still no. kind of are treading water. They are a wild card team. The third in the Atlantic, what have you. Don't want to face that team. That team has upset uh, upset kings all over them, right? Because when you look at just the way they are, they're set up, whether it's, you know, hell, they could be pretty stacked in a five and five play. You give me Nikita Kucherov running your power play and a hot Andre Vasilevsky, you're going to win a round or two or three. So um, I, I do think the Bruins are probably a more complete team uh, when they're, again, when they're playing at a high level, when you got guys like Frederick playing well, the Bruss, Coyle, all those guys, the obvious star power we, we've talked about on this Bruins team. But sometimes it all comes down to just basic execution. And when you've got a power play like that with a guy like Kucherov playing the way he is um, with Vasilevsky and that, it's a tough matchup, man. Like, that's a team that I will not discount until it's, you know, the other team has won four games in a series and they're they're sent home. Like, that team, I, I will not count them out any year that are in the playoffs. I completely agree. Uh, you look at that line uh, that they rolled out on uh, Tuesday night of Kucherov, Point, and Stamkos, and it's like, that is a killer line. Like, that line could wreak havoc in a seven-game series because you have to basically sacrifice one of your lines to try to take them out when it, come, when it would yeah. come to a postseason series. So um, I agree with you. I would take the Bruins still. Um, they're, they would be favored. I mean, like, it, you know, if things continue at the rate that they are, they should be the favorite, uh, and I would take them, but I agree with you. That's not a team I want to face uh, in the first round, just given how good that they are, but uh, it's interesting, Connor. With a series like that, it'd make it really interesting to bet with on FanDuel, so quick word from our friends at FanDuel. Quick break in the show to tell you about our good friends over at FanDuel. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. Bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive props, and more. Just visit FanDuel.com slash Boston and shoot your shot. FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of the NBA. So, Connor, uh, a big storyline, obviously, the past couple weeks. Matt Patra out for the season. And he was someone we discussed a lot in training camp. Probably the biggest topic we talked about. Uh, we talked a lot about him the first couple months of the season as he ascended. And, uh, and then... You know, he hit some ruts, had some injuries, uh, and then obviously had the shoulder injury, which, which sidelined him for the rest of the year. Um, 19 years old. How would you sum up his rookie season? How will we remember it when we look back at it uh, in 10 years? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I think it, you hope that he he builds off of it. And, you know, it'd be great if all of a sudden next year he's got 50, 60 points, right? But I, I, I think when you look at just this year in particular, um, Definitely a surprise. I don't think anyone expected him to make that jump this year. Um, I think even when he surprised a lot of people by making this team back in uh, October, I, I, I think that we all expected what month? <clears throat> what month? What uh, oct month? October. 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 <laughs> October. Um, but I, I think you look at Patra and, and what he provided this team, especially early on when you're looking for a little bit of a jolt of energy. I think he provided that. Again, I don't know anyone that was expecting him to make the team and all of a sudden this guy was going to put up 55, 60 points, anything like that. Still 19, still his first uh, foray against you know NHL competition. So I think you you had to expect there to be bumps in the road. Dude took a beating, <laughs> like, throughout the year right i mean this is a guy that and again give him full credit it feels like every time he got knocked down got right back up stayed in the play like wasn't for a lack of effort or determination or, or wanting to get into those kind of dirty areas of the ice but when you're 19 years old when you're 180 pounds soaking wet those hits uh those battles against the boards those are going to add up over the long season so um i think it was a, a good move by the bruins to have him go under the knife now, um, you know, rest, recover, 
hopefully get a little bit stronger later on this offseason when he's able to, you know, be cleared for that kind of stuff um, as opposed to dealing with a dislocated shoulder or a banged up shoulder that's going to keep on popping out, causing issues, maybe causing more damage. Um, I think if you're the Bruins, you have to take the long approach for with a guy that you hope can be a top six centerman down the road. So, um, so I think even with the, you know, the injury, but beyond that, just the, the setbacks that come with playing in the NHL, the, you know, limited minutes, all those kind of learning curves, those adjustments, uh, I mean, I'm not that surprised by them. I think you should be encouraged for a Bruins fan that, one, this guy's already ahead of schedule in his development, and he's kind of going through these growing pains now as opposed to next year, right? And it's not to say that next year is going to be seamless by any means, but when you're 19, you're going through these first, you know, uh, lessons of, you know, limited ice time, fighting through injuries, fighting through physicality. He's going to come in next year, you know, hopefully he's healthy, um, in camp, 20 years old, knowing what to expect from an NHL season, knowing what the competition is going to be, knowing what he has to do, how to better protect himself, how to deal with the schedule, travel, all that stuff. It's just going to be one thing that's going to be uh, allowed for him to hopefully build off of this. And once you, you've gone through before and you're still just 20 years old, it gives you more of a template, more of a clean slate to build your game a little bit more. And I think that's what the Bruins are hoping to get out of him next year. Again, I don't know if he's going to be a top six centerman, but – if you can build off of this and give you a 40 point season next year and feel more confident. Um, so I, I think that is the most important thing, right. In terms of just how we should view what, what he brings this team overall. You know, to me, it's ahead of schedule. You hit it. Like you, you didn't expect this. He comes in training camp. You know, you think he's probably a year away, lights it up. It's like, okay. All right. Let's see what you got in training camp continues to do better. Uh, continues to rock it in preseason games. You know, after a couple games, okay, let's see you against real NHL talent in the preseason. He dominates that. Uh, then it's like, all right, well, you probably earned your keep up here. Uh, and then, you know, it, it, it just kind of snowballed. And he earned the right to be here. And I think it was ahead of schedule. And you also hit on this, like, uh, the growing pains are happening in a year that the Bruins don't didn't need him to be a top six center or someone prominent on this team. Uh, whatever they got from him would be gravy, uh, and I think that was sort of the case with him this year. Um, I also think it's a cautionary tale. I think it's a cautionary tale uh, because he earned the right to be here. They didn't force him here early. We, You and I, I think we're the most cautious people in the market when it came to him in terms of us saying, hey, look, this is cool. But he's 19, and going back to doing a year of juniors, maybe overseasoning him a bit would not be the worst thing in the world. Now, he proved us wrong because he continued to dominate, uh, continued to look good against NHL competition, and he earned his right to be here. However, there are players that are rushed to the NHL. And in every level of hockey, like with New England Hockey Journal, the, a lot of the players I cover in preps and juniors, they rush to the next level when they're young. And it doesn't work because they're young and they're small and they're getting, they're like a freaking getting like a fly against a wall when they get hit, you know, just bam. And that you saw that with Potra a few times this year, he got up, but he'd get squished. He was like a bug sometimes. And I think it's a cautionary tale for younger players in that, you know, you don't always want to rush guys. I'm, again, I'm not saying Potra's rushed. I'm saying that he wasn't rushed and look at how hard he was hit and, and how many, you know, licks he took. So to me, it was a cautionary tale, and he was ahead of schedule. And I and you know we discussed this a little bit. I think last week uh, when it came to him, like, oh, does this hurt his development? No, I don't think it does because he's still going to have most of the summer to train. He will be in good shape, uh, if you know all things considered, uh, come the start of next season. Uh, so uh, to me, I, I don't look at it as bad. I don't think the Bruins messed this up. Um, so I mean, again, he could have got injured in juniors. That's another thing. Like he could, if right. he was back in the, if he was back there, he could have got injured, and then it'd be like, oh yep. shit! Imagine if he was up in the NHL. So, I think it it, it goes both ways. Uh, before we continue our conversation, uh, a quick word from our sponsor. Get started on your New Year's resolutions with Factor, so you're ready for the new year. Factor's ready-to-eat meal delivery takes the stress out of meal planning and sets you up for success in the new year. Skip the grocery stores, prep work, and cooking fatigue. Instead. Get chef-crafted, dietitian-approved meals delivered right to your door. With over 35 meals to choose from each week, including options like keto, calorie smart, vegan and veggie, and more, plus over 55 weekly add-ons, you'll have a ton of nutritious and flavorful options to kickstart your resolutions. 
No more wasting time in the kitchen. Not only does Factor offer fast, simple solutions when I'm too busy to cook, they also help me stay on top of my goals. With offerings like Protein Plus and Keto, I can stay on track. This is definitely going to come in handy for my New Year's goals. So head to factormeals.com slash poke50 and use code poke50 to get 50% off. That's code P-O-K-E 50. Factor Meals, your go-to ready-to-eat meal delivery service. And now, let's get back to the show. So the Bruins are in a little bit of a rut. We've seen that. There was the Calgary game. There was Washington. There was the loss against Tampa on Tuesday. Uh, and, you know, we've talked a lot about the deadline. We will continue to talk a lot about the deadline and what potentially needs to come in to kind of spark things. But is there anybody in Providence? Is this the time to go down and get someone like Fabian Lysel and give the team a little charge? Or is there anybody else, a Beecher, potentially? Yeah, I'm, I am curious to see if they maybe do bring up at least one more guy to see if it gives them just a little bit of a, a jolt here before they have to look at, you know, outside of this organization. Again, when we've talked about um, trade deadline targets, we've looked a lot at, you know, third pairing D, uh, fourth line guy. I don't know how realistically they're going to be in the market for like a middle six kind of player. So I think right now, if you're the Bruins and you're looking for a little bit of a, a jolt here and it can be provided by maybe a guy like Fabian Lysel, who's playing at a pretty high level right now down in, in Providence. Um, I think that's definitely an option, right? I think you look especially at the bottom six, you know, if you put in Lysel and you put him with a guy like, you know, uh, Frederick and Geehee and see if he can get something there. Um, or even as you said, like, wouldn't hate putting Johnny Beecher back up here. Again, I know he kind of was up and down a little bit, but you look at one, uh, how good he's at faceoffs, uh, the the fact that, you know, I, I used to think there were a lot more positives and negatives in terms of his overall season so far. Again, operating with the the knowledge that it is his rookie year, so there are going to be ups and downs as we all expected, but I don't think he was necessarily a detriment or playing himself out of the lineup per se. No, he sucked. Um, Connery, we, he sucked. Yeah. You, you, you missed the yeah. point. He sucked, yeah, okay? No, I, I know, Evan. I'm being soft once again. But, no, I, I, I do think, especially, like, looking at a guy like Lysel, it's kind of like the same thing with Mark Yilov where, you know, obviously he wasn't able to, you know, impact the game maybe as much as we thought. But at the time where the Bruins need a little bit of a, a jolt, different look, young players see how they do in that spot if, you know, they're able to get a little bit of a – some momentum out of that call up as well. Probably doesn't hurt to see what you have there, right? I mean, even if you're looking at, you know, moving on from a guy like him or you're trying to look at what your assets are, has a nice little stretch up here. One, you either have a young cost control guy that you know you can either keep this year or you know you have in your back pocket for, let's say, next year if he thinks he's able to make the team out of camp. Or if he has a couple of good games, you, you bring him up and keep teams interested and maybe that's a guy you look at moving as part of a bigger deal if need be so i really don't see the uh the danger in calling up maybe a guy like i sell and see what you have here again keep expectations in check i don't think you should be thinking that he's gonna have uh you know five points in four games or what have you but see how he does see how he fits in especially on that maybe that third line see if you get a little bit something more out of him um and helps you over this little stretch here where maybe you just need a little bit more of a, a push from someone else further down in the lineup. I don't think it can hurt. I, I'm fine with it, giving them a kick in the ass right now. And, and I want to see what Lysel brings. I do. He's been playing better down in Providence. Uh, you know, they're in a little bit of a rut. The, the, the bottom six is still up in the air. You don't have a set third or fourth line yet. I'm all for it. Give it a shot. Doesn't mean it's got to work. The deadline is still uh, a little less than a month away. Try it. I'm fine with that. You know, I think now is a good time given where they're at in the standings and given where they've been at the past couple of games. Um, so I'm fine with that. Uh, would you look at low rye again on the back end or you, do you like what you're seeing? I mean, I probably don't necessarily like what I'm seeing all the way around from the, the decor, but I, I think where low rye fits isn't necessarily what, I'm looking for in that spot. That seems very complicated. Agreed. But, it, you know. It, no, it, I agree I, with you on this. You don't want someone. You don't need a puck mover. You need someone who's a little bit defensively irresponsible it, at times. You need someone who's locked down, shut down. Yeah, I, I need more fortitude back there. I'd I'd still rather when you look at just what Lori's strengths are, um, what the needs of this team are. For right now, at least, again, we'll revisit this. I'm sure we'll re revisit it every month, right? But. I'd rather keep him down in Providence playing 20 plus minutes a night, feeling confident about his game, racking up points. Um, do that right now. I don't think necessarily the 
the lack of a, a scoring punch from maybe a guy up front like Lysel, that doesn't necessarily translate to the fact they need more of that from the the blue line, at least in terms of what a guy like Lorai can provide and what the potential net negatives are bringing up as well. So I, I keep him down in province. I'm looking more at a guy like Lysel or a forward like that to see if you get a little bit more of a, a spark that way. Bring up Bussy and trade Olmark. That's the that's what that's the move. That's the big move you got to do uh, if you really want to shake things up. Uh, kidding, of course. I agree with you. Lysel is probably the guy. Uh, and give Beecher a shot again. Why not? Uh, anyways, that's in Poke the Bear episode two hundred three. Connor, uh, what can people look forward to from you over at Boston.com and the Boston Globe? Yeah, we'll have you covered every step of the way this year with uh, game recaps, features, columns, breakdowns, all that good stuff over at Boston.com. So please read all of that over there. Um, and if you want to follow me on Twitter, you can at Connor Ryan underscore 93. Go do all that. That's Connor Ryan. I'm Evan Marinovsky. Bear listeners, have a great rest of your week.